verse 9. He said, I am the door. So when the door meets a door, a door must yield to the door. All right. So no doors can keep him out. In John chapter 20, verse 19, John 20, verse 19, the Bible says when Jesus rose from the dead, the disciples were in a room and they locked the door because of the fear of the Jews and Jesus just walked through the wall. He didn't have to get a door before he can come in. And I'm saying all this, and by the time I finish, you'll know where I'm going. But I'm saying all this because whether the enemy likes it or not, the door is going to open to somebody today. <laughs> Some of you probably had the testimony of a lady who was given up for dead at a Luth in Lagos. The doctors have said there's no hope. She's the wife of a very wealthy man in a very special room, and uh, they told the husband, sorry, your wife can't last the night. So the husband pretended to be a good husband, sorry, my dear, um, I will see you tomorrow, because they haven't told the wife. So he left, and of course, they shut the door. She left happy. That uh, at long last, I'm going to get rid of this uh, foolish woman. So he phoned the girlfriend and said, Come, the, this stupid fellow will be gone before tomorrow. Come, let's enjoy. But after he left, somebody walked through the door <laughs> and said to her, I am the Lord that he left thee. <laughs> Touched her by the hand. And she was immediately healed. She came out, and as she was going through, the nurses saw her, and they began to run because they thought she had died, and it was her ghost that was coming. And without anybody discharging her, she went home. And because the husband wasn't expecting her, even the door wasn't locked. Uh, so you know the rest of the story. So I, I, I have good news for somebody here today. Even if the enemy thought they had sealed your fate, the king of glory will walk in. Now that brings me to where I'm actually going. If every door opens to Jesus, it means anyone connected to Jesus Christ we find that all doors will be opening unto him or her. Because you see, once he holds you by the right hand and is walking out with you, doors will open unto him. And as the door is opening unto him, both him and you will pass through. For example, Acts chapter 12, from verse 5 to 11. Acts 12, verse 5 to 11 tells us about Peter that I mentioned earlier on. The king wanted to kill him. He's already in prison. The doors of the prison were shut. He was even tied down to two soldiers. They thought his fate was sealed. They were just waiting for the following morning to finish him off. But then the one who comes in without a key came in in the night. And as soon as he touched him, the chain broke off which is good news for somebody here today. All the chains binding you, before you walk out of this building, we drop off in Jesus' name. And then the Bible now says, as they were going, Peter and the one who comes in without a key, as they were approaching each door, each door opened on its own accord. The doors were opening unto the king of glory. And as the king of glory was passing through, Peter was passing through also. So I have good news for someone. You thought you have come for church dedication, but you have come for a brand new beginning. A brand new beginning of open doors. A new beginning of open gates. A new beginning of open wombs. 
a new beginning of open eyes. Amen. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. And the conclusion of the matter is simple. It's not only that Jesus Christ has the keys, not only that he is the door, not only that he himself said, I am the way to everything you can ever think of, opportunities, health, strength, is also the only way to heaven. He said it, he said, no man can come to the Father except by me. In other words, if when you leave this world you want to be in heaven, you better be sure that you are connected to the way, that you are connected to the only one to whom the heavenly gates will open. Because the passage we read there was talking about the everlasting doors. He's talking about that door that separates heaven from earth. When you leave this world and you get to that everlasting gate, everlasting doors, and you say, I want to come in. You knock at the door and they say, who are you? They are not going to open the door simply because you say, I am general overseer. They're not going to open the door because you say, I'm a pastor, I'm a pa- and I'm an apostle, I am, I'm a doctor, I'm a chief, I am this, I am that. They, they will say, sorry, sir, <laughs> we don't open to the people you have mentioned. We open to only one person, the King of Glory. And they will simply say to you, you don't have to bother yourself here. If you turn the other way, you will see a door that is never shut. That's the door of hell. It is only when there is a treasure inside that you need gates. I, I come from Lagos. You will never find a house in motion surrounded by a wall and with a gate. You know why? What is anybody coming there to steal? <laughs> but go to Ikoyi, go to VI. You will, find, <laughs> you will find that almost every house is a small prison because there is treasure inside. In heaven, there is treasure. And so it has not ordinary door, everlasting doors. That's why Jesus Christ said in John 14, verse 1 to 3, John 14, verse 1 to 3, he said, listen, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I'm going to prepare a place for you. When I finish preparing the place, I will come for you. You know why? If you go without him accompanying you, you are not going to heaven. Because you have to pass through the gate. And that's why I'm going to ask you, please, seize this opportunity to get acquainted with Jesus Christ, to become connected to him. To stop being a Christian by name. Seize this wonderful opportunity. An opportunity like this comes only once in a lifetime. There may never be another ecumenical center built in River State. This one is already built. You may never gather like this to hear this kind of sermon. But you have today. You have this opportunity. You have this opportunity to say to Jesus Christ, I surrender to you. Take over my life from now on. So that when it is time for me to leave this world, you will be there holding me by the hand. So that when we get to the everlasting doors, the doors will open unto you. And you and I will walk into heaven. Shall we please bow our heads? If there's anyone here who will say, Pastor, please pray for me. I've not seen it this way before. Now I see it. I don't want to leave this world without Jesus holding my hand. 
And I want to surrender my life to him now completely. I want to surrender to him. I want him to become my Lord. I want him to become 